Hello there. Uh, last week or so, I promised you that I'm going to be your spokesperson, which means I'm going to be talking about spokes. So here I am delivering on my promise. Okay, so here we have a typical bicycle wheel, 32 spokes, uh, 29 inches, nothing really extraordinary. Uh, during a wheel build, a uh, builder is uh, turning nipples at the rim, uh, centering uh, the rim over the, over the lock nuts here, and during that process he is also applying tension to each spoke. In a completely built wheel, uh, each spoke on a certain side, left or right, of, uh, of a wheel theoretically has the same tension. Uh, the important part about being tensioned is that uh, spokes work in a fairly interesting way because uh, they carry a load by being compressed. And the only reason why your rim is not collapsing is because they are uh, tensioned to a value that as they are compressed they lose the tension. Thus, uh, its, ca its uh, capability of carrying tension is its most key uh, parameter. Alright, so if we already know that uh, the key uh, parameter of a spoke is how well can it be tensioned, we need to uh, well, deliberate what sort of material we can make a spoke of. Uh, what we want of a spoke is to be able to be preloaded to a significant value without changing its, uh, its uh, dimension uh, significantly. And thus, by far, the most popular material to make spokes of is obviously steel. Steel spokes are available in two particular types. Uh, the most basic type is uh, unknown steel, uh, which is zinc coated to provide some sort of a corrosion resistance and those spokes that can be found on department store bikes and they are useless. Uh, the only purpose they have is to well be in a wheel and look like a bicycle wheel. Uh, good quality uh, spokes for a bicycle are made out of stainless steel which was hardened and uh, this is the most common type you're going to well you're going to find in a bicycle that hasn't been found in a dumpster or in a department store. However, this is not the only material a spoke can be made of. Uh, spokes can be made of out of aluminum. For example, Industry 9 is a major boutique brand that makes uh, bicycle wheels with aluminum spokes, but they're not the only ones. There are obviously carbon fiber spokes. There are spokes made out of Kevlar. There are, if you found the material that's even a piece of a string, which can be preloaded to a significant value and you can find a way to tension it to a significant value like 1200 newtons or even more then you can use it for a spoke but of course steel is the most popular there are three technologically significant uh, areas of a spoke which is of course its length its head and the thread uh, the important part about the thread of a spoke is that uh, it has to be rolled not cut uh, the head of the spoke is available in two particular flavors. Uh, the most popular one by far is J-Band, in which the, uh, the mushroom head of the spoke is being bent by 90 degrees to the side to make it compatible with flanges of traditional hubs, like here. The other type is straight pull, in which the, uh, the head of the spoke is simply either uh, stamped on the end and without bending it 90 degrees, or sometimes in a few uh, system wheels by boutique brands simply threaded at the end like this and uh, well it's matching only a particular beauty boutique hub what's the difference between straight pull and j-band straight pull exists to solve a problem that shouldn't exist but does because well the most popular type of failure uh, of a J-band spoke is being cracking, cracked and broken here at the, at the head. The head is simply sheared off and obviously the spoke stops working. It's not working at all, it's not pulling or pushing or doing anything. And often the wheel comes out of truth, starts to shimmy left and right. Uh, this type of, of damage occurs 
if during a duty cycle uh, the tension of a spoke is allowed to drop to a value below a certain critical value that's specific to each wheel and each tension. However, if it does, what can happen here is that uh, the head uh, allow, is allowed to shimmy a bit in the spoke hole and after a few hundred thousand duty cycles uh, it is slowly cut here uh, by the flange of the hub and at a certain point it simply gets sheared off now the solution to this is simply to get rid of the band, right? well, yes, but no of course, a straight pull will mask the problem because there is no flange here, to, uh, there is no band here to, to shear from However, the problem here isn't the band, the problem is that the, uh, the wheel was built in a, such a fashion that uh, the drop below the critical value of tension of a spoke was allowed to happen. There are a few esoteric ways to deal with it, but by far the only uh, really efficient way to deal with this is to build the wheel properly. I'm going to expand on this in, a, in a next or some of the next videos. But if your wheel is properly built, there is nothing wrong with the J-band. If your wheel has a straight pull spoke, it is properly, wheel, it is properly built, there is nothing wrong with straight pull. Straight pull is often simply cooler looking, but requires specific hubs and uh, spokes can be difficult to get hold to. So, in my, in my humble opinion, just buy J-band if you can, if you want something fancy, straight pull, there is nothing wrong with it. But there is nothing wrong with J-Band if it was built correctly, and if it was built incorrectly, then straight pull is simply masking the problem, and the wheel is going to collapse in one way or another in the future. Maybe in a different way, but it is going to happen, because uh, if the problem with insufficient tension of a spoke wasn't rectified with a straight pull, it is still slacking here, then uh, this spoke will start to undo itself from its head, or will crack here at a later date, or it's going to lose tension, or your wheel is simply going to tackle, and you're done. Steel is a material of choice for making spokes for many reasons. One of them is that in its unhardened form it is very plastic and it is formed to various shapes. Now, in its hardened form, uh, steel doesn't elongate all that much even if you tension it to a very high values. For example, an, a bicycle spoke is expected to withstand a tension of approximately 1200 newtons. This is the specification from DT Swiss and I believe most rim manufacturers are in the neighborhood of that. And 1200 uh, 1, newtons is approximately as you would hang 120 kilograms or 280 pounds out of this wire. Now, standard spokes are 2 millimeters thick at least in the most common gouge you're going to find. However, they don't have to be. But, you are still limited by the thread of the nipple, you can't make it too thin, and you're still limited by the thickness of the head of the, uh, the J-band. So, what's the solution? Well, you want to save weight, so you want to have less spoke. And this is precisely what's being done, it's called butting. And it's not the uh, mundane part you are uh, you can find on the internet, uh, but it is much more interesting. You see, a spoke, as I said before, has three major uh, areas of technological significance: the head, the thread, and the length of its of its body. So we can't make the head any smaller because it's not going to fit in standard hubs. And we can't make uh, the thread much smaller because it's not going to carry the load we are going to be tensioning it with. Besides, it's a thread. We don't want to make it too small because it's not going to be feasible in our in our usage. For example, your standard spoke uh, tool, the nipple tool, is not going to fit such a small nipple. So what is being done? Uh, the middle section of the spoke, while in the standard spoke it's going to be straight from the top to the bottom or end to end. Uh, in a process of butting, uh, the ends of the, spoke, of the spoke are clamped and it's being stretched so the middle section of the spoke is actually thinner than its uh, thread and then its head. This is a process called butting and it is very popular on, among higher quality spokes because it allows you to save a little bit of weight. Now, uh, this process uh, 
and this initially was done to save weight, but it has a quite a quite important significance on making so-called dish compensated wheels. I'm going to discuss it in a further video. Next video I'm going to make on the channel. What's the deal with buttered spokes? Well, they can be used in place of normal spokes and they are going to save you a bit of weight. Now, how to detect them? Well, if you are shopping for spokes, you, are, you might find uh, standard spokes to be called straight gouge and buttered spokes being described with two or three letters which generally, letters, numbers, which generally describe the thickness of the spoke at various places. You can be almost certain that the thickest dimension is going to be at the J-band because it makes sense to make the most fragile part of the spoke the thickest. So, for example, uh, quite a bit of gravity-oriented spokes are uh, have a 2.3 millimeter head. Then there is a middle section. For example, this is 2.3 at the head. Almost certain it's going to be at the head. 2.0 in the middle. This is the body of the spoke. And 2.0 uh, at, the, at the thread. Now, 2.0, 1.5, is the standard weight we uh, spoke of choice. Essentially, uh, the smallest spoke you can buy on the market today, which is a DT Revolution spoke, or Satim Laser spoke. It is 2.0 at the head, 1.5 at the at the length of its body and 2.0 at the thread. Now, uh, the spoke I'm using for in the indicator here is also butted. This is a Sapping Race and it is 2.0 at the head, 2.0 at the thread and 1.8 at the length of its body. Spokes can be double butted. Essentially, this, these spokes are essentially uh, the head is thicker than the rest of the spoke. Can be triple butted when the spoke is like this. It is thicker uh, thread, thicker head and uh, skinny body and can be even quadruple butted. Uh, in those cases the spoke usually has thick head, a thicker part of the body closer to the head, then it gets slimmer and then the thread it gets a bit thicker. Okay, so now let's discuss aerodynamics a bit. Traditionally spokes are round because they were formed from a round wire, obviously. However, they don't have to be, and some manufacturers um, create or manufacture spokes which are flattened along its, uh, its length, which provide certain uh, aerodynamic benefits, how much I'm not going to discuss at the point of this video. What's important about them is that uh, a spoke uh, is going to perform uh, identically when it comes to mechanicals of a wheel if the area of its cross section is the same regardless of shape of this area which means that an aerodynamic spoke that has been formed by flattening the round wire performs just like a spoke with a round wire of the same cross section now this is important when we are going to discuss mechanicals of the wheel i'm going to talk to it in a later video however a word about aerodynamic spokes is that they are not necessarily compatible with traditional hubs uh, some spokes are, as long as the length of the, of the aerodynamic section does not exceed 2.5 mm or 2.6 mm. Essentially, so we can uh, stick them into a traditional hub. However, if you have a spoke that is very, very aerodynamic, that's almost like a knife, then it might require a special, uh, a special hub. Which, I guess it's a place where a straight pull kind of wheel is going to shine because uh, some forms of a straight pull uh, hub uh, isn't really bound to how uh, aerodynamic spokes can be inserted into them. But the point being that uh, certain aerodynamic spokes may either require to be straight pull or require a spoke hole that has a certain slot which allows those to slide them into during the wheel build. Alright, so this is essentially all you need to know about spokes. In a TRD TW, a spoke needs to be a stainless steel, rolled thread, J-band, properly tensioned wheel, and you're done. If you are chasing grams or want to do some uh, very special things, you might want to consider butted spokes. If you are chasing aerodynamics, consider aerodynamic spokes. If you're chasing uh, looks, then straight pull is probably something you want to discuss, 
and consider. And you don't necessarily need to be afraid of carbon fiber or aluminum spokes because while those materials have different properties to steel, uh, the, as long as the material uh, doesn't elongate too much during, uh, during being uh, preloaded, it's going to work like a spoke perfectly. Uh, theoretically, if you manage to make a string which can which can be preloaded, you can make uh, a spoke out of it, and I think that even some company does that. Anyhow, I hope you found this informative or enjoyable, and I hope to see you in the next video. If you like the content, uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Uh, please thumbs up this video. I always get nervous when I do this. I need to do it with more conviction. Subscribe, like the video, share it around. See you on the next one. How was that?